The Sunera Foundation was founded in 1999 with the name signifying dependability, durability and strength. The foundation began to develop its programs. Each workshop would generate scripts and performances which were then staged locally and selected for a biannual performance for the Samanalayaya Drama Festival at the Lionel event, a celebration of creativity and months of hard work. For many of the performers, this was the first standing ovation they had ever received, perhaps changing the way they perceived themselves forever. Sunera expanded their workshops across the country, reaching people far and wide. Today, the organization has 37 established workshops with a team of 40 trainers and 5,000 participants from 250 performances over the past 20 years. A compilation of incredible stories from their 20-year journey, Wings, the Sunera story, is now available at leading bookstores around the island. Sunetra, 20 years of the Sunera Foundation. When this started out, did you see it evolving into what it is today? Not at all. My good friend Wolfgang Stanger, who was doing work with disabled people in England, invited me to attend a workshop because he thought that he will be able to get me to work with them. I said, I'm coming for 15 minutes, but I sat right through the entire duration of the workshop and I had tears in my eyes, not of sorrow, but of joy, seeing what these people were capable of doing. So then Wolf realized that I'm hooked. So then we planned a production and that was the very first one we did called Butterflies Will Always Fly and we performed it right throughout the country and then the success of it made us go into other productions. At the time this all started, mm -hmm. we had an issue with regard to the physically and mentally challenged in our country. If I remember right, it was almost 5% of the population that we figured were affected in some way or the other, yes, yes. not only by the war, but we had in terms of a uh, a challenged population, so to speak, um, a significant number. We went into the statistics of it and we found that there's not five, about 12 and a half percent. People with disabilities, which includes those who got disabled in the war, and they were totally marginalized. Nobody was talking about them. Nobody wanted to know them. Society had marginalized them, rejected them. And even the families found it very difficult yeah. to cope with that kind of viciousness of society. So I said to myself, surely we can do something for them. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Wolfgang Stanger, I realized the performing arts mm -hmm. is the best by far mm -hmm. way to bring them together, give them joy, and also develop their self-confidence, which is very, very important. Yeah. Because they were stuck in the back room of a house yeah. with no life at all. Yeah. So it was the performing arts that we introduced and we started to plan a workshop here, a workshop there, and that's how we started it. And how did the community react? Did you have to convince parents and family members that this was a good thing and that their children could come out into the open, so to speak? Because these are kids who were, as you say, marginalized. In fact, a lot of them locked up at home. The mothers had some doubts because they had never been invited to bring their children along for any activity. Mm -hmm. Far from it, they were pushed out. Mm -hmm. Suddenly we say, bring them together. Mm -hmm. But they came along out of curiosity mm -hmm. and they started getting involved. Then they saw what this was all about. And what really made them feel good about it is the changes they saw in their children. The children spoke for themselves, not us. And it's amazing to see now how much they are part of the whole exercise. 
in fact, the enthusiasm from the parents, and, and now even the community uh, at large yes. has been quite amazing. I think we have been able to, in our own small way, raise awareness amongst the general public in this country. You know what the reaction of the audiences are when they come out of that uh, theatre. Exactly. Uh, and some of them don't even realise that some of the performers have disabilities. Yeah. They don't believe that they have disabled. All of them are yeah. disabled one way or another, but they don't even realize Especially, it. you know, when uh, we used masks for one of the That's right. productions. Swinging times. Swinging times. Yeah. Um, I was amazed right. that I was suddenly watching our participants on stage yeah. and not for a moment did I think that they were challenged or, uh, you know, with a disability or were more, less or more able than yeah. I, and they moved beautifully. Uh, you spoke about art. That has been, without a doubt, the most effective vehicle. Oh, absolutely. After 20 years, I am convinced, beyond any doubt, that the performing arts and also art in the sense of painting yeah. Art in the sense of storybook reading, telling stories, all that is what has made these young people grow. It has clearly been a very fulfilling experience. Oh, sure. you? Hmm? I could never think of doing anything else now, yeah. right? And this will go on for as long as I am physically and mentally able to work. Yeah. And touch wood right now, I am fine. Yeah. And we have got a team of trainers. Without our trainers, there will be no sooner. Yeah. It is they who carry the load. Yeah. Day after day, they are out in the field working with these children. When we meet them, when we talk to them, they are so fired up with how the children have developed, how the mothers feel about it. So we know that it's part of them now. Yeah. It's in their blood, it's yeah. in their system. You know, just so that the general public know how we function, uh, you could just uh, give us or give them an idea yeah. of what the structure of the organization is and how we uh, use that to yeah. further our work. We are a charitable trust. I am at press of the chairperson yeah. and we have a head office in, based in the city of Colombo, uh, which is uh, headed by our chief executive officer and they do all the work. Mm. Uh, supporting the field. Mm. We have 38 to 40 trainers, which is quite a lot, yeah. scattered all over the country from the north to the south, from the west to the east. Yeah. So they communicate with the field manager who communicates with the head office. Mm. So it runs beautifully. It's like a thread mm. that runs from the beginning to the end mm. with hardly any hiccups because we work very closely with everybody, with transparency, communicating, so we all know what each one is doing. And if there is any problem that's rearing its head, yeah. we act on it immediately to sort it out. Unfortunately, with the COVID virus, yeah. uh, this last year we've had to, uh, yeah. um, well, uh, not shut down operations, but, but restrict. Yeah. And we are hoping that in the next two or three months, we are looking forward to starting our workshops yeah. again. And, and remarkably, yeah. even though I say it being a trustee, we've kept the operation going. Absolutely. So our trainers are still very much in touch. With the mothers, see, all yeah. the time. Constantly. Yeah. yeah. So we keep them together. And that is what we've had to do during yeah. this uh, time of crisis. We want the parents to feel that we have abandoned the kids. We have to be very grateful to our supporters, our donors. Well, first of all, I must say, if not for the found funders, I don't know how we would have run this show. Yeah. But people have come forward with generous, generous funding. People in Sri Lanka, people living abroad, um, foreign governments. Governments, exactly. Foreign governments. Organizations, yeah. Yes, the World Bank has given us funds. Yeah. So we have had a cross-section of funders but one particular thing I would like to refer to is my friends 
in England. These are the people who make up um, the FSF, Friends of the Sunera Foundation. They are the ones who make up the Friends. They, yeah. uh, about the time of tsunami, yeah. one of them was here holidaying with me yeah. and she went back and she had told our friends, look, we have to find ways of supporting Sunera Foundation. And they started this foundation, they got charitable status in England mm. and from that time for a good 10 or 12 years mm. they were supporting us. Yeah. Then of course we have had musicians. Our good friend Mr. Rohan de Silva. Yes, of course. Who is a musician par excellence yeah. in America. Yeah. And he's completely committed to helping Sunera Foundation. Yes. So over the years he has brought at least about eight or ten sure. musicians to Sri Lanka sure. to perform yeah. free yeah. so that we can raise funds. Yeah. And so um, um, for you personally, yeah. it has clearly been a very fulfilling experience. Oh, sure, sure, mm. sure. Uh, I could never think of doing anything else now, yeah. right? And this will go on. We've got good trustees who can take it forward after me. So it's something to be very, very thankful for in a way. Thankful for is the word. Mm. Very thankful for. Well, thank you all very much for agreeing to spend part of your morning with us. Just to start it off, um, how come um, the three of you got involved with Sunera? Probably the trigger point was when Sonera brought a performance to London. And I, for one, was completely blown away by it. I mean, yeah. it was all in languages that I didn't know or understand. But that didn't matter because the power of the storyline and, the, uh, and, and the, 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 um, the moving performances mm. conveyed to us what it was about. And it was, it was just wonderful. And the talent of the performers. I mean, the music was unfamiliar to our ears. Yeah. But the dancing, people dancing in wheelchairs and on crutches, yes. we just found it ex inspiring. I mean, it was, it was, it was extraordinary. It was a, an enthralling theatrical experience. Yeah. Um, for me, I previously worked with young disabled children and their families, so I was very aware of, the, uh, of what parents had to face and cope with yeah. and about the low expectations that society in general has of disabled people and the negative attitudes and the discrimination that they and their families face. I was inspired and wanted to work with Sunetra, obviously because of our friendship, yes. our four-way friendship, but also because I'm an actress yes. and I believe in the power of theatre and mm -hmm. the uses of theatre mm -hmm. to open people's ability to express themselves, to communicate, and yeah. to feel part of a community. I was just so struck by the way that the workshop leaders are so organised. They mm. plan ahead, mm. everything is at hand, um, it all runs smoothly, they know exactly what they're doing, um, they allow plenty of time for every activity, mm. and the, 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 the staff within each workshop work so wonderfully together as a team. Yeah. It's all very professional and yeah. extremely well done. I saw individual participants in the workshop mm -hmm. being given, you know, their own individual attention and great yeah. care. I was also privileged to speak with some of the parents. Right. I, I, I was very moved by the way they talked about how they had felt so isolated. Yes. And that nobody understood them till they met one another. And then there was this instant recognition of what each of them was coping with and how difficult it was for them. Yeah. But also the, the pleasure, the joy at seeing their children blossom and learn new skills and new confidence. Yeah. Um, I, I found that wonderful. Yeah. yeah, that has been one of the most satisfying aspects, actually, of all uh, what we've done, yes. apart from the participants yes. themselves. Yes. The, the fact that we've been able to break down, to, to a certain extent, the, the stigma um, yes. attached to uh, yes. a disability. Alison, um, your experience with the workshops, what were your impressions? I was incredibly impressed, and I think it's a measure of their extraordinary quality, that so many of them that I met in 2006 are still there. I think their manner of working is amazing. Susie spoke about structure. 
We know that true creativity needs a structure, yeah. and this is what they give the participants. The routine, the dance, the, the games that they go through, the greeting at the beginning in all the languages and sign language. The trainers were there, they were observant, they were using all their senses to pick up on what was going on. Yeah. And they were willing to play as well, you know, which, which sometimes is, is, not, is not willing. They were willing to really go into it themselves yeah. and join in. Um, Susan, is there anything you would like to say about the, what was it, 10 years that FSF was um, connected with us? Um, were you all satisfied with uh, the way your support was utilized? Yes, we were. Um, yeah. We were very specific about finding out what they wanted it to achieve and very specific about learning whether it did or not. We were very keen to know uh, what could be improved. We were very keen to follow up on good practice. And we used those stories. They were very moving, many of those stories, yeah. especially from the parents or the children, talking about how it had changed their lives. Yeah. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. I wish I could remember some of those stories, but they, I, I don't cry a lot, but they bring tears to your eyes that, that a child and her parents or his parents had their lives changed for the better. And I'm very proud, I think we all are, of having been able to help such a very worthwhile, such yeah. a very... Um, transparent as well to use a, a cant word you know yeah. you knew where the money went we yeah. knew it was going to the place it was needed it's a very impressive a very impressive organization um and one of our strengths was we were and we always emphasized this to potential donors that we could guarantee that the money would go to the frontline work that aspect of our work is very very important to us especially this question of transparency, professionalism, accountability. Um, would you also say that you've seen um, our work um, having ultimately made a difference? In, in answer to your question specifically, I think it's had the most incredible gradual effect and the roots are firmly dug in. It's always been relevant. I think the, the extraordinary ways in which it's grown, I mean, the number of workshops has grown. Yeah. I mean, I see now about 38, um, the development of workshops in the plantation mm. in the North, and the healing of wounds, the, the coming together of, yeah. of Tamil and Sinhala meetings and children in a, in a joint project has been extraordinary. But something which has already been touched on as well, the role of the parents and carers has increased. And the sort of circle of ripples has spread out from the participants, the trainers, the families, villages, communities, the city. All this influence has come from this tiny organization, yeah. which is just what, eight or nine people in an office. It's so obvious now that what the sort of work that Sunera does is so important for everybody. Yes. That human contact that care of the vulnerable. And I fear that as COVID, we hope, lessens the inequalities that have been dis rediscovered in all our societies, mm -hmm. may be further entrenched if yeah. people are too desirous of making profit rather than looking after people. So I think it's so important that Sunera believes in itself and, and continues, and we will be right behind them. I would like to say how, how proud I am, and I know we all are, of our association with yeah. SF. It's been a privilege and we do wish you the very best in the coming years. It's a wonderful organization and thank you for letting us be part of it. To end, is there a message that you would like to send to us here at the Sunera Foundation? I would like to echo everything that Susan said, but also to say, Sunera, please believe you are more important than ever and do everything you can to to revive that family, to bring everyone together. We will find ways of supporting and ways of reaching out. Hi, Rohan. Hi, Rohan. Hope you're keeping safe and well. Thank you so much for agreeing to be part of this interview. Your contribution and your support for Sunera has been immense. But tell me, what inspired you to get involved with Sunera and its work? So, my affiliation to Sunera began in 1997 when uh, Miss Bandaranaika and I flew down from London to Colombo and we were seated next to each other on a flight and uh, we started talking. 
And then she told me what this foundation was all about and mentioned about the differently abled in Sri Lanka of all ethnic backgrounds and religion. So that immediately sparked something out of me because I am performing for the past 20 years with the greatest violinist in the world, Itzhak Perlman, who is also disabled. So this is this was most important for me. And I said to Sunetra, I said, I would love to do a concert for you guys. And she was so shocked. She said, I'm going to take you up on this. And after that, every year, every two years, I happened to bring artists. And my first concert for the Sunetra Foundation was in 1999 with Stefan Milankovic. And subsequently, over the years, I think I have played at least 10 times. So this foundation is very close to my heart. And as long as I can do whatever I can to help, I will keep on working and doing what I can. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you very, very much for being part of this interview. Hope to see you soon. Keep safe and well. Thank you. Everywhere they go, Sunera makes it a point to engage with the community. A widespread stigma associates disability with bad karma. Families with disabled children face rejection from society. In the tea plantation regions of Sri Lanka, children are often kept hidden, and many parents hold little hope for their children's futures. Sunera's so goal is to quietly chip away at this stigma. Through exercise, art, dance, trauma, music and yoga, the Sunera method helps children develop vital social, emotional and physical skills. This island-wide impact would not be possible without Sunera's community of nearly 40 trainers, each of whom will tell you that working with these children has been a transformative experience. For Premila, her initial experiences with Sunera were the start of an unusual career. Before her first workshop, she had never met anyone disabled in her life. Today, she runs workshops around the country. Nolene has seen young people who were completely bed-bound begin to move simply by being introduced to music and dancing. At Sunera, she has found a family. Each believes they can make a difference in the world. And the impact is tangible. Over the past 20 years, Sunera has changed the lives of many families. Devirati, who lives in a small town close to Hatton, kept her children at home for 15 years, unsure of how to help them. After a few months of workshops, her boys discovered a love for dancing and crafts and together spoke their first words. For Sayuri, dancing on stage with her friends is now her favourite thing in the world. For Gamini and his son Sinhajit, who have been attending the Dehivala workshop for 16 years, Sunera has transformed their lives. After all, there is nothing quite like a Sunera performance. Some young people are physically capable of taking leading roles, others might only walk across the stage, but each takes great pride in their moment in the limelight. Children who were once turned away were now being accepted by a society which was applauding their talents. Twenty years in, Sunera is still going strong, expanding its wings, determined to continue their journey and bring a new lease of life to differently abled young people across the island. All proceeds from the book will be used by the Foundation to support their ongoing work for differently abled children around the country.